Hello everyone, happy Sunday. Welcome to Bariatrics and Tips. I am Michelle Giesen. That has not changed. I am coming to you live from my kitchen here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Welcome to an early edition of Bariatrics and Tips recipe demonstration. Thank you so much for those that are tuning in today an hour earlier. If you're new to this format, we are usually meeting at two o'clock on Sundays, but I've got some Thing that I need to do at 2 o'clock today. My good friend's son is obtaining his Eagle Scout and it's a huge, huge deal for him and for his family and for me because I'm part of the family. So I'm going to attend that and I just wanted to say congratulations Zachary on your Eagle Scout. Hopefully everyone understands. Thank you so much for bending and flexing with me for this. Welcome. We've got a great, great, great episode today called Zupa. We are gonna talk about soup. Um, and I just wanted to thank you all for being here. I tell you all this all the time, I look forward to Sunday recipe demonstrations a lot. It actually gives me a lot of opportunity to do my own meal plan because a lot of times I'll plan meals, even Sunday night dinners, based on my recipe demonstrations, that way nothing goes to waste. So it's really um, a great thing for me too. I've already been to the grocery store today. I've already got everything that I need for the week. I'm really proud of myself. I spent less than a hundred dollars and I just shopped for the week. And that is my ultimate goal in an effort to live large and cook small. There's no reason to buy more than what we need because so many times things have just gone to waste because I haven't used them. And so my goal is always to live large, cook small and shop small. So that's what I'm doing. So, you know, one thing that we all have in common is that we have all had weight loss surgery or we're gearing up to have weight loss surgery. And then even for those who aren't, maybe you're supporting a loved one or you are just on a quest of your own to eat healthier. Whatever the reason, we've got this journey somewhat in common. And just because we're given this bariatric tool doesn't mean we have to feel deprived of eating well. We can still do this. Food is a huge part of our lives. Whether we like it or not, it's here to stay. We have to eat to live, not live to eat. Um, and it's one of those things where if you can't beat them, join them. We're always gonna have potlucks at work. We're always gonna have family get-togethers for holidays and just because we're always gonna be in the car on the go and we need to find ways to eat on the go without succumbing to the golden arches or, you know, got meat, <laughs> something like that. At any rate, the whole goal here is to not have to walk the face of this earth feeling deprived just know that don't think you can't have this you can't have that you can you just have to make good healthy choices for yourself you make the choice you stay in control i'm type a control freak personality all the way i know firsthand it is up to me what i choose to put in my mouth no one's holding a gun up to my head i make that choice and if i make a choice that's not good then i'm gonna have to live with it I'll have to accept it, um, you know, not be, not be in denial of it, and then I'll have to move on and create that action plan that allows me to have the best of both worlds because we can. Remove the word deprived from your vocabulary because there's no way you should ever have to feel deprived. Um, you know, this is our second chance to live. This is, oh, thanks, Melissa. This is our second chance to live. This is our second chance to do things right and, and, and have a do-over. Bariatric surgery has made that possible for me and I know I'm worth it and I know you're worth it too. So just remove the word deprived from your vocabulary because here we go. And one great way to do that is with soup. Um, I wanna get to the Sunday Spotlight real quick. I had sent three requests to um, various members of our group page for the Sunday Spotlight invitation and I didn't hear back from them and I'm very, very bummed about it. I don't know if people don't understand the significance of the Sunday Spotlight or if you're scared or you don't feel like um, it makes sense to you, but it doesn't matter what part of the journey that you're at. 
The Sunday spotlight, Sunday spotlight is to recognize you and your efforts. You already did the bravest thing possible. You made the choice to have bariatric surgery. It wasn't one that should be made overnight. It wasn't cheap. It was a brave, bold move, and that alone requires celebration. So it doesn't matter if you are new to the journey and lost two pounds, or if you're a seasoned, um, a seasoned survivor like myself, it's been six years, and I'm down 130 pounds. Whatever, whatever the milestone is, Sunday Spotlight allows us to celebrate with you. And I want you to please think long and hard about accepting my invitation right now. Who wants to be on for the Sunday Spotlight next week? Please send me a message. I will still wait for the people that, have, that I've invited to come forward. But I would love, love to recognize you. Um, and all it requires is a short little bio, maybe a before and current picture, and then we can help celebrate you because you are so worth it. And I'm so glad that everybody is here for the journey, okay? Remember, you are worth the effort. You need to love yourself through thick and thin, and I mean that literally and figuratively. And that's one of the purposes of the Sunday Spotlight. So please think about it. We're gonna shift over to our Zupa episode because um, time is of the essence today. But I have two soups prepared for you and then a bonus recipe that is actually in the oven at 350 degrees right now. Um, and everything will be posted for you starting at 2 p.m. Um, I have prepared for you two kinds of soup and then the bonus recipe which I will share with you shortly. Um, we're gonna start off today with chi my chili recipe. Um, it has been, chili is a, really soft, uh, is a really rough topic for me because I have never found a recipe that I love so much where I have to have it again and again and again until now, okay? I'm gonna be 50 years old this year, I'm not gonna lie. Finally, after 50 years, I have found a chili recipe that I absolutely love and I hope that you love it too. The main thing that you want to know is the premise of this. Like I said at the very, very beginning, we all take what we need. This is what works for me. If it doesn't work for you, you can modify it, make it your own. But the premise is, um, I love my chili. I love decking it out with different toppings like diced jalapenos, chopped onion, non-fat plain Greek yogurt, um, a little bit of parsley for color, some shredded cheddar cheese. Actually, everything in that bowl right here, you're gonna see that shortly. I'm gonna actually bring it up to the camera and give you a close-up of it. Um, my chili uses a secret weapon, and I heard, well, it's gonna be not a not-so-secret weapon soon enough, but um, I read about it somewhere, and I honestly don't even remember where I read it, but after I read about it, I Googled it, and I, now I hear it everywhere. So I guess it really is not a not-so-secret secret weapon. But my chili is pumpkin chili. There is one can of pumpkin puree in it. Um, and you know, the pumpkin flavor, it's not overwhelming at all. In fact, you don't even really realize that it's in there. You don't, you can't smell it and, and smell the pumpkin. You can't taste it and say, oh my God, there's pumpkin in it. It's very mild. It has a wonderful, rich, creamy texture. And you know, it has a lot of nutrients too. But really what I also love about the pumpkin in the chili is that it adds this gorgeous color that just reminds me of October and harvest and autumn and you can have it smack dab in the middle of winter or spring or summer or fall it's just the best chili of all and I'm a poet and I know it <laughs> so at any rate let me give you a close-up first I'm gonna walk around and I'm gonna show you my pumpkin chili hopefully I don't spill it as I show you all right do 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 can you see it's amazing. I do have chopped onion, um, yellow onion. I've got cheddar cheese, a little bit of parsley for color, and my beloved non-fat plain Greek yogurt. So that is wonderful. Um, what I do for the pumpkin chili, and if you hear interference in the background, it is my wonderful husband coming inside. Are you doing something, Troy? All right, he must have heard me talking to the camera and not myself. At any rate, pumpkin chili, what I use for the pumpkin chili recipe, and this recipe, I believe, I can't remember if this is, I think this is the one that's posted at four o'clock. 
Um, I use two garlic cloves, a teaspoon of oregano, one to two tablespoons of cumin, and I love cumin, so that's why I kind of give it a range. My original recipe called for one tablespoon, um, but I ended up kicking it up quite a bit, um, and so I'm thinking I probably used almost the full two tablespoons. I just love the way it tastes. Um, a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, but again, you can tweak that to taste too, because if you like it hot, like I do, you tend to put a little bit more. And in fact, the recipe originally called for a half, and I cranked that one up a notch too. Um, chili powder, one to two tablespoons of that as well. Um, and again, modify it to your liking. Omit it if you have, um, if yourself or your family don't like the heat. Um, an eight ounce can of tomato sauce, a whole can of pumpkin puree. You want the solid packed pumpkin. You don't want the, um, like the pumpkin pie stuff. You just want solid pumpkin puree. A teaspoon of salt, and then a can each of kidney beans and black beans. Again, this is one of those things where that's what works for me. If you wanna use different kinds of beans, feel free and shoot the moon. Um, but whatever beans you choose, make sure that you're draining them and rinsing them. Um, and then anywhere from one to four jalapenos diced and sliced. Um, this bowl actually has, well not this bowl, but this batch of chili that I made had four jalapenos. I wanted to go big and go home. And um, it's good stuff, it delivers no, some nice heat. And you know what, if you want the flavor of the jalapeno without the heat, um, you can seed it first because it's the seeds and that membrane that deliver the heat. So you can still, um, have your jalapeno and not go to the ER and put as much as you want in. <laughs> um, and then finally, one can of diced green tomato or diced tomatoes with green chilies. And again, I use the hot stuff. You can use mild. You don't even have to use the diced tomatoes with chilies if you don't want to. This is the beauty of these kind of recipes. You can modify it to your liking. Um, so really what you want to do, you can choose the meat that you want. I used uh, lean ground turkey. You can use ground turkey, ground chicken, ground pork, ground beef. You can use the regular beef, the lean ground beef, the extra lean ground beef. I've actually used quite a bit of ground. I've used the regular ground beef, the extra lean ground beef, which, I'm, which is what I um, usually use, but I did have ground turkey in the freezer, so I used that. Um, the ground turkey, you can get it in regular ground turkey, lean ground turkey, and extra lean ground turkey. The only thing that you need to be careful with is if you're, the leaner that it is, um, the drier it's going to look when it's in the pan and you're browning it. So you'd want to add maybe some, a little bit of oil or a little bit of broth, like turkey broth or vegetable broth. Even chicken broth would work. Something to keep it moist while you're browning it because the more lean it is, the less fat is in it and it's more likely to burn than brown. So there's my meat rant. Um, you want to make the meat with the garlic and then you can go ahead and add your other spices and your beans and you can just let it simmer on your stove or in your crock pot for at least a half an hour but the more you cook it the better and if you find that it gets a little thick for your liking you can dilute it a little with the broth of your choice um, and again remember the pumpkin flavor isn't overwhelming at all it's actually quite tasty um, and I think that you will love it. It also freezes beautifully and it stays in the fridge for, for I'd say at least a week. Um, so you can definitely try that. It's a really great meal. It works well if you're on the go and you're going to work. It works great just hanging out in the fridge waiting for you. It's just a very delicious comforting meal. So that is my pumpkin chili. I hope that you adore it as much as I do and definitely cater it to your liking. I'm going to put this aside, and now I'm going to go to my favorite recipe. This is a self-created recipe, um, and it's actually good. I know it's good for bariatric patients, diabetic patients, keto followers, although don't get me started on keto. Um, it's lemon artichoke chicken soup with spinach, and this is one of my favorite things to make. I absolutely love it. I am so fond of lemon, and I tend to do like the more lemon, the better. Um, and I'll tell you, I actually, I'll come over here and I'll come to the camera and I'll show you, but I can't tilt it that much because it will spill. But hopefully you can get, hold on, I'm going to do this. I don't know. Can you see it? Probably not because I'm not a very good camera woman. All right. Well, you'll see the picture soon enough. Um, bear with me. I'm coming back. 
But at any rate, this is a really, um, and hold on, because I totally did the camera wrong. I shouldn't have even touched it. Bear with me, you guys, I'm sorry. All right, that's good. So at any rate, lemon artichoke chicken soup with spinach. It's pretty self-explanatory based on the title alone, um, but it's got a great, great chicken broth um, and very lemony flavor. Now again, this is something that you're gonna cater to your own needs. Put in as much or as little lemon as you want. I tend to put in with the recipe what I established as the minimum lemon content for the recipe, and then I tweak it as needed just because I'm so fond of lemon. Um, but you're gonna start with a large carrot and you, it's more for, for flavor than anything else. This batch, I don't have any carrots in just because I ran out and was making it before I went to the store. Two stalks of celery chopped, a yellow onion chopped, two cloves of minced garlic, a tablespoon of olive oil, one to two, one to two teaspoons of kosher salt, a teaspoon of pepper, two cups of shredded chicken, and you'll wanna do that beforehand. Um, some soups, allow you or give you the option of cooking the chicken in with the broth. But if you do that, you're gonna get all the like foamy stuff of the chicken when the chicken boils. And my best practice is just to do it before. That way you know, you know exactly what you're contending with. Um, four cups of chicken stock, and you may need a little bit more depending on if it, if it boils down or whatnot. Six ounces of artichoke hearts, an eight ounce bag of frozen chopped spinach, and you don't have to really worry about draining it too much um, like you would in other recipes because it's going into a soup. Um, and then you want a 12 ounce bag of frozen cauliflower rice. The other thing that I put in is I put in one to two packages of shirataki rice shaped pasta. That's like your skinny pasta, your pasta zero. They have a rice shaped um, option that I find is absolutely fantastic. And when you mix the shirataki rice shake pasta with the cauliflower rice, you get these amazing mouthfuls of, of rice that it, it just tastes great. And it's so, it, it takes you so far from the feelings of being deprived. Um, I just like, I like that option. So again, that's optional. Um, and then the last thing you want is the zest and the juice of two whole lemons. Um, and one of the really good things that you can do before you squeeze the lemon is roll it on your countertop. That makes it, it, it makes it easier for the juice to be delivered out when you're, when you're juicing it. Um, you're gonna make it all together. Really what you wanna do is you wanna cook all the veggies in olive oil until they're a little bit softer or translucent and then combine the rest of the ingredients. And again, just like the chili, let it simmer for 30 minutes at least. Um, you can add more salt or lemon as needed. Um, you can add more garlic if you decide that you want. Again, it's your recipe. You decide what you put in there. Um, it's really great. You can serve it with um, slices of lemon like I have here. And I don't think you're going to be able to see it, which really here, you can see my picture. <laughs> There's my pic oh, my hands in front of it, my picture of the lemon. Um, but it's super delicious, very refreshing. Um, and it's really one of my favorite soups when you're looking at the calorie content of it. I mean, you've got the chicken broth, you've got the cauliflower rice, the shirataki rice, if you're opting to use it, has a very little um, calorie content. The artichokes, you could even um, just put your artichokes in per serving and that way you know what you're contending with. But those are minimal calories too, as long as you don't have them marinated in olive oil. I like to use either fresh artichokes or I get a big jar of canned artichokes. I can't even show you since we are doing okay on time. I get the can of artichoke hearts from Sam's Club and it's in a nice big jar. And it says on the back, um, the serving size is a half a cup and there's only 25 calories. So in the essence of time and space and just you know utilizing your resources without having to waste, you could feasibly put in your own portion into the soup after you've uh, dished it out. Um, so definitely an option too. Um, it's a great, great meal. It unfortunately isn't one of those soups where I end up able to um, cook small. It ends up being, and this is like, this is halving the recipe that I used to have. Um, and it still makes quite a bit, 
But that is a great segue into my bonus recipe for you, a way to repurpose your soups. And you can repurpose your chili, you can repurpose any kind of, um, any kind of soup that you're doing this and you can turn it into a casserole. And I have done just that. So our lemon artichoke chicken soup with spinach now becomes lemon artichoke chicken soup casserole with spinach. And I'm gonna show it to you right now. I am gonna make room for it right here and take it out of the oven. Oh, it's nice and bubbly too, so it's like perfect timing. So I used um, a mini cast iron skillet. Yes, it's one of my pan beloved Pampered Chef items and I will show you what it looks like. It is just a small mini, like you can make, I've made um, individual pan pizzas in this uh, and just a ton of other, a ton of stuff. So um, I used this and what I did was I drained a little bit of the broth from the rest of the good stuff in the soup. So it was a little bit thicker and I just had like the rices and the spinach and the chicken and the celery and the carrots. Actually, there's no carrots in this one, but you get the gist of it. And I put it in a bowl and I mixed it. I set aside a cup of mozzarella cheese and then I set about a quarter of a cup aside from that and I mixed all the cheese in with the guts of the soup and I poured it into the skillet. And then with the remaining cheese, I put it on top and I put it in the oven at 350 right before we started our show. And now it comes out and it's nice and browned on top and you can garnish it with a, um, it's too hot to, to show you. You can garnish it with your um, parsley and your lemon wedge and it becomes this casserole that is just so, so delicious. I was really pleased with how it came out and actually it happened late last week when I was, I worked from home and I was hungry but I don't, I didn't know what I wanted and I really wasn't feeling soup but I ended up just kind of putzing around and that is what I got from it. So when you hack into it, you just get this amazing, cheesy, lemony, casserole kind of soup casserole, and it's delicious. And so a really great way to repurpose your soup or your chili, um, just to add a little bit of cheese, add what you think would make it good, and then you have a repurposed meal where you don't have to waste or you don't have to dread eating the same thing every day until it's gone. So. Hopefully that gives you some food for thought, literally and figuratively. I know that it was a pretty quickie recipe demonstration today, but there are so many things that you can do with soup. Um, it really helps uh, vegetable broth and chicken broth are really good, low calorie, fat, virtually fat free um, ways for you to make your own soup, make your, make your own creations. If you are here in the Western Mission, Michigan area and you have, um, you shop at Meyer, broth is on sale this week for a buck, a buck for a big, huge, um, like large drink box full of chicken stock or vegetable stock. I just bought some today while I was at the store. Um, it's a great way to stir fry. It's a great way to um, make your soups and your casseroles. And I highly recommend it. It's, it's just a non-caloric way of getting what you need. Um, and so you can definitely feel good experimenting. If you have any questions about any of the products or items that I have shown you today, please let me know. I'm always happy to help. If you have further questions, don't forget to always loop your surgeon and or dietitian into the mix. They are the pros. Um, you know, toss ideas around in your local support group through your bariatric clinic. We do that a lot here. Um, as always, Bariatrics and Tips is on all social media. That's Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. Next week, we are going to be doing Memorial Day makeovers. And I haven't solidified the menu yet, which means if you're thinking of something that you might want to have or serve, send me a message. Let me know because maybe I'm thinking the same thing and I'd love to be able to make that over for you next Sunday um, which is May 23rd. Um, after that, we are gonna do on May 30th, we're gonna do salad dressings, dips, and spices. 
And then June 6th, we are gonna do breakfast bonanza and the wheels are already turning with that menu planning. So lots of fun stuff on the horizon. I appreciate you guys being such a great part of our group page and I hope you have a fantastic Sunday and don't forget to live large, eat small, and find flavor in everything that you do, okay? Have a great day, you guys. Bye-bye.